Um, okay, so thanks a million for the opportunity um, for to allow myself and Olivia to present on a, it's a very early stages of a study that we did looking at out of field teachers understanding of mathematical content and particularly in the area of fractions. Now, again, just to reiterate that um, the, we are very much in the preliminary stages of analysis. But when we saw the opportunity to um, present at this symposium, we said we would put forward the abstract and it'll get us started on much deeper analysis going forward. So just a quick overview, we'll just introduce, give a bit of background, the importance of knowledge and understanding for teaching. We look at the methodology for this particular study, just very briefly outline some of the preliminary findings and possible implications and future questions, which we think might um, be food for thought for this group. So again, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Nee Reardon and Hannigan report in 2011, which found that 48% of Irish mathematics teachers were deemed to be out of field. That has reduced in 2019, there was a study conducted, it has been reduced to 25% as a result of an upskilling program that's in place in Ireland. However, what Nee Reardon and Hannigan found at the time was that first and second year students were the most likely years for specialist teachers to be asked to teach mathematics by principles. So first and second year students, it's basically the first and second year of their secondary education. So it's those students that are just through the transition from primary to post-primary education and aged around 12 to 14. So the qualified teachers were generally assigned to exam years. So we have two summative exams in the Irish context, um, which would be in third year and sixth year of secondary school. So this clearly demonstrates that school principals are acutely aware that mathematical qualifications and experience are important in the teaching of mathematics, but priority is given to exam years or senior cycle um, in their deployment of resources. This is despite the fact that maths research has shown is the subject that is most affected by transitional issues. So in relation to changes in pedagogy, the development of content and so on. And research has set, suggested that specialist teachers should be employed at junior cycle to ensure that a solid foundation is established with these students so that they can then progress throughout post-primary school education. But that currently is not the case in Ireland. So then we are particularly concerned with the knowledge and understanding that these teachers bring. So I suppose the first question that people might ask is, well, why are we concerned with these teachers' levels of knowledge? And there's a lot of research and just a couple of quotes, and they're quite old just to show that this has been an area of research for many, many years, but the importance of um, content knowledge or just knowledge for effective teaching. So no one questions what a teacher knows is the most one of the most important influences on what is done in the classroom. So that's why we are keen to investigate the knowledge and understanding of this particular group of teachers. And again, the importance of an extensive knowledge base is highlighted by that quote from Anne et al. in 2004. So just some of the current findings then. We know that poor knowledge or low levels of knowledge, whether it be amongst in-service teachers, which is also an issue, or or sorry, I should say in field teachers or out of field teachers, regardless of the teaching, teaching qualification status, poor knowledge is going to lead to inadequate and ineffective teaching, which in turn leads to poor understanding. And then in particular in Ireland, this has had an impact on the poor uptake of higher level mathematics and poor performance in mathematics, which is something our government is keen to address in order to produce graduates for a technology and scientifically drenched um, workforce. So this isn't a new area of research, and one of the first in the field of the seminal piece of work, I suppose, was Schulman, who outlined three different knowledge domains um, that were essential for the teacher of any subject. This was not mathematics specific. He first of all said that, that subject matter knowledge was critical for any teacher's knowledge base. He says it would be extremely difficult to develop any other knowledge type without a strong foundation in subject matter knowledge. Another knowledge domain that Schulman found to be really import important for the purpose of teaching was pedagogical content knowledge. So this is the teacher's knowledge in relation to employing a variety of teaching strategies, as well as their ability to use representations, resources, applications, and explanations which students can understand. Finally, the third element of Schulman's package of knowledge, and one which depends heavily on competency in those that I've just discussed, is curricular knowledge. So it's a knowledge of teaching tools such as textbook or IT, as well as an understanding of alternative approaches. Now, many, many researchers since Schulman published his work in this area have expanded 
developed, further refined this model of knowledge. And I'm just going to look at two of those. So firstly, Tim Rowland's knowledge, which again, it relates to primary school teachers, but it is mathematics specific. And the first knowledge domain that he outlined in his quartet was foundation knowledge. And it's unsurprising that this again refers to content knowledge, indicating the emphasis or the importance that's attributed to this type of knowledge. It's the foundation of everything else that teachers need to develop in order to teach effectively. Um, the second component was then transformational knowledge, and it's what would have been traditionally known as pedagogical knowledge. Roland believed it's this knowledge which distinguishes a mathematics teacher from a mathematician or a layperson or someone that is involved in a career that has a lot of mathematics, but not necessarily required to teach that. The next um, knowledge domain is knowledge of connections, and it relates to teachers knowing how to sequence or arrange um, topics or content in the mathematical classroom. And finally, the contingency knowledge, the knowledge to teach on one's feet and to deal with the unexpected, essentially. So that was a knowledge produced for in the UK by Tim Rowland and his colleagues. A model then produced in the US, um, which again elaborated on Schulman's model, was produced by Deborah Ball and her colleagues in Michigan State. And again, they, they took the subject matter knowledge, which was central to Schulman's model, and expanded on it. So they said common content knowledge, that's the knowledge that everybody needs in order to be able to be, I suppose, numerate, as well as to be able to function in society. Knowledge of the mathematical horizon and specialized content knowledge are knowledge domains specific to the purpose of teaching. So specialized content knowledge is that knowledge of connections, um, the understanding about the interrelated nature of many of the strands of mathematics. And likewise, knowledge at the mathematical horizon is being aware of the mathematics that students would have studied prior to entering the classroom and that they will study after they leave your classroom. Pedagogical content knowledge then, they split it into three, knowledge of content and students, knowledge of content and teaching, and knowledge of the curriculum. But as well as needing a deep understand or deep sorry, knowledge of mathematics and an extensive knowledge of mathematics, teachers also need high levels of understanding. Understanding in this context is defined as the mathematical expertise as, and skill a teacher has and uses for the purpose of promoting students' understanding of expertise with and appreciation for mathematics. So that's how Kilpatrick and his colleagues defined mathematical understanding for secondary teaching. So that was a book published in 2015. So in relation to extensive knowledge, which we've seen is much more than just knowing mathematics, teachers also need to know the mathematics they are teaching in a more connected and abstract manner. So what we've tried to look at is how can we relate these two? How can we relate knowledge and understanding? And what we found was a model for understanding, a model of what teachers need in order to demonstrate understanding. And we can see strong ties between this and our um, models of teacher knowledge. And for that reason, we use it as a theoretical framework for this study. So Yusiskin um, said that in order to be able to understand or to show that you understand a mathematical concept, you need to be able to demonstrate skill algorithm. That means you need to be able to perform the mathematical procedure. Property proof, means that you need to be able to explain the rationale behind the procedure. Use application means that in order to understand the concept, you need to be able to explain where it is used in real life. And representation or metaphor means, again, to understand a concept means that you need to be able to represent it in a multitude of ways. And finally, he mentions history and culture, which is the ability to understand the origins of many of the mathematical concepts that we teach. Clear parallels can be drawn between New Siskin's framework and the different domains in the model of teacher knowledge that I referred to earlier. I'll just present one example, but more parallels can be drawn on closer inspection. So let's take the knowledge quartet that we looked at by Tim Rowland. Strong links can be established between the four domains in New Siskin's model and the domains of knowledge outlined by Rowland, in particular the foundation and transformation domains. Foundation knowledge embodies a teacher's subject matter knowledge and beliefs about mathematics and mathematics education, and hence it very much links to skill algorithm and property proof. While transformation knowledge is the knowledge required to convert subject matter knowledge into a form that students can learn, it encompasses the analogies, representations, illustrations, examples, and demonstrations, and hence clear parallels can be seen with the use application dimension and the representation metaphor. So due to the alignment between your Siskin's model for understanding and the models for teacher knowledge, which plays a much 
they all place a stronger emphasis on conceptual understanding and problem solving, which is the focus of the Irish curriculum. We felt that this was the most appropriate model or theoretical framework for our study. So just then, our study, this particular presentation is just focusing on content knowledge or skill algorithm. So is it enough? We know that the answer to this is no. We know that it requires more than just content knowledge. It requires more than knowing the mathematics. However, we cannot deny the fact that without content knowledge or skill algorithm as it's coined by you, Siskin, nothing else would be achieved. No other knowledge domains can be developed. So we've gone right back to basics essentially to investigate the content knowledge or skill algorithm of these out of field teachers. So just then in relation to the study design, our population was obviously out of field teachers, mathematics, sorry, teachers. It was a case study because we were just looking at one cohort of teachers, a small, a relatively small number given the extent of this um, issue in Ireland. It was a mixed methods approach. The research instrument was a test to assess understanding and the sampling was convenient sampling. So how we selected our sample essentially was the professional diploma in mathematics for teaching um, recommenced, let's say version two, as we call it here in 2020. So that first cohort of teachers, there was 106 teachers in total. They all had to attend pedagogy workshops. So we used them pedagogy workshops to give out this test. In total, 75 from a potential 106 teachers enrolled on the PDMT formed our sample. Now there was some reasons that like we missed out on 31 teachers. COVID was kind of um, rearing its head again during the first workshop. It was held in October last year. So um, COVID was just kind of starting off again in Ireland. So there was a number of teachers missing in that regard, but also some teachers just were not willing to do the test for us for research purposes. So we were down 31 teachers. I just provide there an overview of the number of years teaching experience. So you can quite clearly see the vast majority have between one and three years teaching experience. Um, 12 didn't give this information, only, only four teachers had um, over 10 years experience. When this test was given out, these out of field teachers had engaged in five mathematics content modules. Um, well, four and a half, let's say. They had two algebra modules fully completed, one calculus module fully completed, one history of maths module fully completed, and they were halfway through their calculus model, module. Sorry. They had also completed the summer school, so that is a pedagogical aspect of the program, whereby they looked at the ideas of portfolios for teaching, numeracy across the curriculum, IT and education, the idea of that horizon knowledge that Ball makes reference to and had touched on math thinking, but not in relation to fractions. It was in relation to linear equations. So that is looking at the rationale behind the procedure for solving linear equations. So this is an example of the test that we gave to the students, or sorry, to the out of field teachers. So we left out, and that was based on you Siskin's um, advice that history culture is very hard to incorporate or to analyze and assess. So we actually um, omitted that dimension and we looked at the other four dimensions of Siskin's framework. So we gave them a relatively simple addition problem, three and a third plus four and a fifth. We asked them to solve it or to evaluate it, to explain the rationale, to give a meaningful real life example and to give a graphical or pictorial representation. For this presentation, we are only looking at the skill algorithm, but we are looking at it across four different problems. So we have our addition problem, our subtraction, multiplication and um, division. So a lot of re research into teachers' knowledge of fractions has solely focused on one um, operation. We wanted to consider all four. So our addition problem was three and a third plus four and a fifth. Obviously the answer is seven and eight, eight over 15. So what we found here was that 12% of teachers could not provide an answer to this question or demonstrated a misconception. So that was nine teachers in total. In fact, eight of those teachers left it blank and we had an option, I don't know, can you see it back there? Sorry, I actually cut it out. But down the end of this, there was a don't know. And we did ask teachers not to guess if they didn't know how to do it, just select don't know and move on. So eight of the teachers, um, eight of the 75 selected, they didn't know how to do this um, problem. And one teacher demonstrated a misconception. So we can see here, they converted three and a third to three over three and four and a fifth to four over five. 
and then proceeded to add and kind of got stuck along the way. So that was the misconception demonstrated by the teacher in relation to addition. And that teacher had one year teaching experience. We then move on to subtraction. This was actually the best answered question on the test. Only four teachers could not provide an answer or demonstrated a misconception. It was actually three teachers demonstrated a misconception, one left a blank. And this was the misconception. They converted two thirds. They knew they needed the same denominator and converted two thirds to one sixth. And actually two teachers out of the three that demonstrated a misconception gave that um, as their solution. So they could not, um, engage with or work with the idea of equivalent fractions. And again, the three teachers who demonstrated a misconception had one to three years teaching experience. For multiplication then, problems were exasperated. So that was three eighths by one fifth. 15 teachers could not provide an answer or demonstrated a misconception. And 10 of those actually demonstrated the misconception. So 10 out of 75 had a flawed understanding of fraction multiplication. Now, there was two very obvious misconceptions that emerged here. So this would have been the first one. You can see I left the property proof in here, even though it's not the focus of this talk, but they're again confused in relation to multiplication and division. They have to multiply like by like, they think. So they convert three eighths to um, a fraction with a denominator of 40, 15 over 40. They did that correctly. They create, they converted one fifth to a fraction with a denominator of 40, did that correctly. And then they multiplied, but they multiplied 15 by eight and then kept the denominator the same, similar to the process they would use for addition. And five teachers demonstrated that misconception, that exact misconception. And I think what we also need to be aware of is if we look at the answer that they're getting, an answer of three for three eighths of one fifth, they really have no understanding of what the answer represents, getting an answer of three for a question um, of that nature. And the second one then, and we were saying when we were doing up this presentation, there's nearly a full research paper here on this idea of cross multiplying because it's come up so frequently. So here you can see they multiply the denominator of one fraction by the numerator of another and the numerator, and the same again, the numerator of one by the denominator of the other. How they decide which one acts as the numerator and which one acts as the denominator. <laughs> Again, a research study in itself. Um, another interesting point here was we did ask them, were they currently teaching mathematics? Of the 10 teachers who gave these misconceptions, seven were currently teaching mathematics at second level. And again, one to three teaching years teaching experience was what all these teachers had. We then moved on to division. And again, unsurprisingly, a lot of the misconceptions noted with multiplication stemmed uh, or arose again when we looked at division. But we really found it hard to categorize the misconceptions here. Albeit there was 22 teachers demonstrated a misconception or left it blank. So just the first one, and again, we can see how rules that have got mixed up or convoluted um, explanations have resulted in this. They inverted, fine, we all know invert and multiply that rule that they just like to repeat and repeat, but flip and take away. Again, demonstrating very little understanding of what they're actually doing when they're dividing. We then had, um, again, inverted correctly. So this word invert, I'm sure they've heard it so many times, they know that that's what to do um, when left with the division of fractions. But again, that's going back to the misconception that we identified with multiplication. And finally then five over six by three over two, and they, again, went back to this misconception, converting five over six to a fraction with a base of, or a denominator, I should say, at 12, likewise, the second fraction, and then just multiplying your numerators. So again, like th that first example that we gave, the flip and take away example, that teacher has three years teaching experience and is currently teaching mathematics. So to us, there was huge cause for concern, I think, here. And I'm just conscious of the time, and I want to give some time for discussion. So just some of the conclusions and implications that we identified, there's a large proportion, like over 30, over sorry, a quarter in some cases, close to 30%, displaying serious misconceptions in relation to what I think should be considered at second level basic fraction operations. The levels of understanding demonstrated just in the skill algorithm, and like we haven't fully analyzed the property proof or the use application, so we're concerned already about what we'll find there, but um, 
it just shows that they're not in a position to teach for understanding, let alone is their knowledge adequate to teach procedures. Like we were saying among ourselves, if a student, a first year, let's say a 12 or 13 year old came home with, let's say that flip and take away approach, I think I'd be reprimanding them for not listening in class in, under the assumption that the teacher must have taught it correctly. It's particularly concerning given that these teachers are primarily allocated to lower secondary classes where the foundation of many of these concepts are being established with young students. So that led to some questions then in relation to if this PDMT is serving the needs of out of field teachers. And one thing, and I know um, Stephen brought this up in his own thesis, the PDMT is designed to meet the needs of the teaching council so that upon graduation, these teachers are recognized as qualified teachers of mathematics. But that means they need to have a certain amount of credits in algebra, a certain amount of credits in calculus, in geometry and so on. But is that fit for purpose for out of field teachers given that they do not know how to add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions? Is a bridging program needed? So in the University of Limerick, for mature students returning to education, they are offered an access program if they are going into a, mod or into a, a course that requires mathematics. So it's called a Head Start program. And it's two weeks um, before they enter university where they revisit basic mathematical concepts with, an, with the aim of teaching for understanding. And we're left questioning, do out of field teachers need that bridging program before ever entering onto the PDMT? And probably the most concerning question that we had is what lasting impact will these teachers have on students? And in particular, the teachers of tomorrow, because you can be guaranteed in front of any of these teachers teaching um, mathematics today, whether they be in field or out field, there's going to be a proportion of the students in front of them that are going to go on to become teachers of tomorrow.